It's NFL mailbag time here. I am your host, Tom Downey. All of these questions coming in from our live audience on YouTube. First up from Emil, who will have a better career, Lamb or Jefferson? I think the answer is both. Like, they're both going to be awesome receivers. I'm probably going to lean C.D. Lamb if he has Dak Prescott because Lamb was putting up ungodly numbers with Dak Prescott and still went up with almost 1,000 yards with Andy Dalton and having Amari Cooper on his team as well. So, And having, of course, Dalton Schultz be involved and even Michael Gallup. So Jefferson's going to be great. Lamb's going to be great, but I think i go CD for now. From Vernon Spades, a super chat. $10. Thank you, my man. If the Falcons draft a quarterback at four or trade down for a back in a CB and a, a QB2 in free agency like Trubisky, Dalton, Taylor, or Brissett, what about Trask, Book, or Ellinger to groom behind Ryan? If you want a quarterback to be, to be the future behind that, Ryan, take him at four. Getting a Zach Wilson, a, a Trey Lance, a Justin Fields is going to set you up a lot better at quarterback than Kyle Trask or Ian Book or Sam Ellinger. If you want to kind of kick the can and wait on a future franchise guy, I'm down to sign a Trubisky or a Dalton, maybe a Brissett if you want to have a potential stopgap beyond just for one year. I don't think Trask, Booker, or Ellinger are going to be franchise guys. Of those three, I think you've ranked them in the right order. Trask has the best chance. I think Book and Ellinger, though, are going to be career backups. I think that's pretty much their ceiling. I don't think Trask becomes much of a starter either. From Evan Hughes, should we sign Patrick Peterson if we lose Shaquille Griffin? If you can get Patrick Peterson cheaper, yes, I, I'm on board with that idea. I don't know how plausible that's going to end up being, but I think it's at least worth considering if you're Seattle. From Sean Conley, I think, or Conley, that Conley, yeah, I'm dumb. Should the Ravens sign Corey Davis? There it is, Sean. We got your question. Sure, I'm down with that. I think he could be a legit, if not 1A, more of a 1B. I think he and Marquise Brown, if he develops along, could be a good duo at receiver. I'd go get A-Rob first, but maybe he gets franchise tag. If so, yeah, I will open up a checkbook to try and bring in Corey Davis. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think for the Ravens, he should be high on their free agency target list. From Mark Kern to the Texans fired Jack Easterby. Uh, the real question here is why Houston hasn't fired past Pastor Jack already because he doesn't bring anything to the organization. He's a grifter who somehow has immense power in the organization. It honestly does not make any sense to me. If you guys are looking for all the videos we put together across all of our channels, an easy way to help find that actually is to follow us on Twitter at Chat Sports. We almost tweet out all of the videos we do across all of our different team channels. So check the comments, check the description, Go follow us on Twitter. The link is very simply at Chat Sports. If you want NFL updates on Twitter, go, go follow us at Chat Sports. Supreme Fugate, Fugate, however you say it. Who do the Patriots go for in NFL free agency? Uh, a quarterback, if there's one available. And offensive playmakers, because at receiver, there is not much. Someone mentioned Corey Davis earlier. I wouldn't mind that one. If Chris Godwin got there, I did that too. So we'll see. I think offense needs to be a focus for New England. Super chat from Jericho. Also want to shout out Burning Spades for his second super chat. Can Carolina get Deshaun Watts without trading Christian McCaffrey? Yeah, sure. I don't think that's that difficult. Just add more draft picks. Like, frankly, I'll say this, though. If you're Carolina and Houston goes, hey, the only way you get Deshaun Watson is if you give, a, give us – McCaffrey, that is not something that should ever stand in your way. Christian McCaffrey is a great football player. Don't get me wrong. A top 10, top 5, whatever running back should never be prioritized over a top 10, top 5, top whatever quarterback. If it comes down to we can only keep one of Deshaun or, or Christian McCaffrey, you take Deshaun Watson every single time, especially since McCaffrey – didn't play very much this past year. Timothy Mullen, are the Jags going to cut Gardner Minshew? Maybe. I think a trade is possible. If you want a backup quarterback, I think Minshew can be that for you. He's so cheap, by the way, that Jacksonville does not need to cut him. They can find a way to keep him on the roster as a cheap backup. So I don't think they have to cut him unless he wants out. But 
if you can get a draft pick back for him, since he's clearly not your future, I think that does make some sense for the uh, for, for, for Jacksonville, even for a, se a separate NFL team. Archie Romero, what is Russell Wilson trying to get from the Seahawks, and what's the percent chance he's traded this offseason? I think that what Wilson and his agent are trying to do is obtain some more power. That, that It looks to me, and it's very clear that, that there is an internal struggle between what Russell Wilson wants to do and how he thinks the best way to win is versus what Pete Carroll wants to do, what he thinks the best way to win is. Russell Wilson wants to throw it. He wants to air it out in 2021, which makes sense. Pete Carroll, big fan of running, running the football. I think that there is still a way for those two, two to coexist fairly easily, but in today's NFL, you got to keep the quarterback happy. A trade this offseason doesn't make a ton of sense, but by leaking all this stuff and putting it out there, I think it's a, a push by Wilson's camp to obtain more power. So what do you guys think? Is the percent chance, then, of a Russell Wilson trade this offseason? I'd say, like, maybe 5%. But I'm going to make this question the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and let me know what the percent chance of, or yeah, the, the percent chance of a Russell Wilson trade happening this offseason. From Rohan, will the Niners draft Trask in the second round? I hope not. I don't think that'd be a very good pick. From Akash, what other defensive linemen ranking one through five should teams be interested in? Uh, are you talk, are you talking draft? Uh, you know, Christian Barmore is number one. After that, uh, it's not great. Uh, you could maybe go Levi Onzariki from Washington. Uh, Davion Nixon from Iowa. There's the two USC guys, some of those players. It's, it's honestly not a great defensive line draft class. From Untouchable Raider. Should the Raiders sign Mike Pinnell, the defensive tackle, and Shandon Sullivan, the cornerback? I'll start with, with uh, Pinnell here. Sure, if, if you want to make him like your Jonathan Hankins replacement, I've got no problems there. He's a good run stopper. Doesn't bring you a whole lot more. Uh, Shandon Sullivan, I need to check if he's a free agent or not. Played with the Packers this, this past year. Uh, let me double check. He is a restricted free agent, so you have to go get, get, get up a draft pick for him. I don't think that's the most likely outcome in the end. From PJ, Bears sign Kaepernick and pick a quarterback on day three. Sure. Guys, I am sorry. Kaepernick got screwed by the NFL. That ship has sailed. It has left port and is out of the country altogether. Like, it is beyond inter international waters here. It's not happening. And if you're Chicago, eh, maybe you wanted to get a quarterback before just day three. Now, if you guys want NFL videos every single day, hit that big red button and subscribe. That way, you don't miss anything that we do. We've got the live mailbags, news, rumors, trades, mock draft, agency, all that kind of stuff. If you want to stay updated, hit that big red button and subscribe today. Jason, who do you think guys is the best player in this year's draft besides Herbert and Jefferson? I mean, Chase Young, right? Uh, Tristan Wirfs was awesome as well. Just two names that came to mind. Uh, Jesus or Jesus Diaz, what are the expectations for a fully healthy Niners team? I mean, I'd say at minimum back to, to the playoffs. I mean, that's a very realistic expectation for, for San Francisco. From Peter, where does Tylen Wallace go and what team could he have the most success on? Um, I think Tylen Wallace goes, Maybe he sneaks into the back end of round two, probably instead goes round three, maybe in a deep receiver class, he falls to round four. I like Tylen Wallace a lot. I'm honestly not even that worried about like a specific team fit for him. I, I'll say this, though. I think with what the Saints do on offense, he'd be a lot of fun over there. From Stewart, should the Falcons draft another cornerback in round one of the NFL draft? I don't love the options at four. If the Falcons, though, were to trade down to, like, 8 or to, like, 12, I'm on board with that. I got three guys in that top 15, really, I think, in the end, that probably opening the door at 6 would be a bit of a reach, down to that number 12 or number 16 range for Arizona slash New England. Three names to watch out for. Caleb Farley, my guy from Virginia Tech, Patrick Sertan out of Alabama, and J.C. Horn from South Carolina. If you trade down... 
and you get one of those guys with whatever pick you end up trading down to, I think that makes a lot of sense. So let me know in the comments who your favorite draft prospect is. It does not have to be your best one. Simply your favorite draft prospect this year. I'm a big fan of Jeremiah Wusu koromoa from Notre Dame. He's going to be a tricky fit in the NFL, but he's fun. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section. From Jamie, would 18 and 36 be enough to get to number 10 for Miami? So let me do some quick math here on the old trade value chart. Uh, let's see here. You're moving up to that, that second round pick. I think that gets you about in the right area. It might still be a little bit on, on the, frankly, the higher end. Um, I think 36 and, and, eight, and 18 get you to 10. You could even maybe find a way to pull off 18 and 50. That might be possible. But, but if you're a team like Denver or Dallas and you're down to move down, Getting an extra top 40 pick is a lot. So frankly, Jamie, I think it actually might be too much to get to number 10. I think that definitely works. But it's the trade market. It's always weird every single year. From I Got Game 12, who should the Bills target on the free agency list, and are you guys going to make a Bills channel? TBD on the Bills channel. I can make no promises right now. As for the Bills free agency list, um, maybe offensive line? Do you want to look at the running back market? If you lose Matt Milano, do you want to go with a cheaper linebacker? I think for Buffalo, depends on how aggressive they want to be. Do they, do they want to save some money to, to, to set aside for, for Josh Allen? Bills are in pretty good shape. They don't have to be too splashy this offseason. From the RMB Bros, should the Niners sign Desmond King to pair up with Jason Red if we can re-sign him? Well, King's a nickel. So he can be your nickel corner if you want him to be. I think if you're San Francisco, though, you should probably prioritize finding another outside corner if you were to bring back Jason Verrett. Look, the Niners' defensive scheme might change a little bit, but under Robert Tyler, they like the long guys, the long and tall corners. That's not King. So if he's your nickel, it's fine. Maybe just bring back Williams, though. It's an option. I think the priority, though, for, for the Niners should be to focus on an outside corner more than another nickel slash slot option. From Logan Beer, what a great last name. Who should the Lions target in free agency? Uh, receivers. Because <laughs> there's one guy under contract right now, Quintez Cephas. You want to look for another defensive lineman, another front seven guy because you keep missing on those guys? That makes sense. But I think number one, receiver. I'd say franchise or pay Kenny Galladay and then find another n number two player. You know, maybe that's even like a Sammy Watkins of the Chiefs. That, that could make sense for Detroit. Give you guys a chance now to be a hater. What NFL team do you guys hate the most? What NFL team can you just not stand at all? This is a safe space in the comments section. Let me know what NFL team you guys just despise the most. William wants to know a dark horse candidate in both conferences. I'm going to approach this as championship contender dark horse. So I will go, do, do the Browns count in the AFC? Maybe the playoffs, but I'm going to go Browns slash Dolphins in the AFC. In the NFC, hmm, not, not, not as clear for me there. Um, whichever team wins the NFC West, feels like a, a cheating a little bit there. How about this? If Washington can actually find a legitimate franchise quarterback, Give me them. Look at that. Back-to-back -back Washington questions. From They Call Me G. Who's the ideal receiver to pair with McLaurin? Allen Robinson? I mean, McLaurin's a fantastic route runner. He gets open with ease. So I think you can find someone who's a bit more of a bigger body possession guy. So I'd say Kenny Galladay, Allen Robinson would both be great fits there. If you want a shiftier slot receiver guy, I'm down with that too. I think because McLaurin is so, I'm going to use the word, steady and reliable, you can go a lot of different directions to get another really good receiver. Shanav, fits magic to Denver to mentor Drew Locke like Tua and probably take Locke's spot. I wonder if from Fitz's perspective, if he's going to go, no, I want to be a starter or we have a chance to start. I think if Denver adds a veteran quarterback, it's going to be under the, under the guise of, hey, if our starter is bad, we are down to take a look at you and give you playing time as we try to keep our jobs alive. But 
We're not promising you a starting role or even the chance to compete for one immediately. So if you want a veteran, I'm on board with that one. From Mitty, trade Russell or fire Pete Carroll if you had to choose. Give me the quarterback. Like, I, Pete, both these guys are awesome. Don't get me wrong there. Pete Carroll's a fantastic coach. Wilson is a great quarterback. Who's going to be around five years from now? It's actually probably Russell Wilson. And if you're Seattle, you lucked into Russ. It is very difficult to find a true franchise quarterback. So if I have to choose, I will fire Pete Carroll and I will keep Russell Wilson and make him happy and be a contender like I've been for ev almost every single year under him. Super Chat from Vernon Spade says the Falcons going from worst to first in the division. Possible. The Saints might not have Drew Brees, in which case that resets that division. The Bucs are going to be a threat, though. You can catch Carolina. So of the worst to first contenders, I do think the Falcons make quite a bit of sense. I'm not convinced that's the most likely outcome, but I think they're a strong contender there.